Hi, I hope you're doing really well. My name is Rebecca and this is Moving Stitches, my knitting channel. Mostly I talk about knitting. Sometimes it's vlogs, sometimes podcasts, but today we're going to talk all about my fall or autumn knitting plans and I'm so excited to share this with you. Before I share with you my knitting plans, I just wanted to say a big huge thank you to everyone who's been sharing the excitement about the fall field scale on Instagram and on YouTube. Both myself and Jackie from Jackie is Making are co-hosting our first fall make-along just to celebrate the season, which we think is the best season of the year, and just to get us excited about those knitting projects or crochet projects that we can't wait to make this season. More information about this has been shared in both our channels, but if you want more details, you can go to our Instagram. And we just want to say a big thank you to the community for supporting us in this call. We are really, really excited and we can't wait to cast on. You know when you read a book and you're like, all the vibes are there, but there's no plot, but yet you enjoy it? Well, let's say that my making plans are just like that, all vibes, no plot. And you might be surprised that most of my plans sort of have yarn stars that I could use. The first pattern that was not meant to be in my plans, but it is now, <laughs> is the Salty Day Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh or Kutowa Kika. The Salty Day Sweater is knitted both in 5mm and 3mm needles at a gauge of 17 stitches in 24 rows. This is a drop shoulder sweater and if I recall correctly at the start of the year so that I wanted to go towards more of like a drop shoulder vibe because I've had so many raglans in my wardrobe. It has a mix of different panels where it interchanges lace motifs with texture and it gives it a, li a little bit of a nice oversized. To me it's kind of like a back to school college vibe and that's why I liked it. It is knitted in DK, however she knits it in two strands and I was able to achieve gauge with just one. And the yarn that I'm actually using because I've already cast on this one is Drop Stacy in the color 05, which is this bad boy here. If you've been here before, you probably remember I have done the Calm Down Sweater test knit with this yarn. However, I was noticing that this was spilling a lot in stocking it. Well, this yarn, which by the way, I actually really, really enjoy knitting with this, is terrible for stocking it because it peels a lot. It actually gives a really good definition for ribbon and lace and cable. And I would very much like to have this done for October. And let me tell you, it's the most addictive pattern that's fallen into my hands in a really, really long time. This is all I have so far. So I've completed like the back panel and I'm just working my way through one of the front panels. Very excited about this and this is going to be my back to school or back to college or however you want to call it, inspiration sweater. Now be with me because the second sweater is something that I swatch for but I, I actually I'm changing my mind in terms of the yarn so I may need your opinion on this one. So the second sweater I want to make and it's going to be part of the fall field skull is going to be the Mayflower jumper by the Petite Knitter. I feel like last year I saw a couple of podcasters making one of the petite knitters, one of the most simple sweaters from her and I loved it. I think it was Marlene from Marlene Knits and someone else as well but I can't remember. Anastasia from Fearship as well. They were making, I can't remember the name, I'll put it on the screen, one of the petite knitter sweaters and then I thought actually I've never made anything from this girl and I really like her designs. And I've got a Mayflower jumper. The Mayflower jumper is a circular yoke sweater that is knitted with color work motifs right in the yoke and then it's completely done in stocking it. The gauge for this pattern is 22 stitches in 21 and a half rows and is knitted in 4.5 and 3 millimeter needles in decay weight. Now if you have watched my previous episode I shared the mini lacy swatch that I made and this was my original one again using yarn from Stash and this is a drop slimmer. It's 65% wool and 35% alpaca and it's this really 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 nice navy color. And the other one it's I can't remember the number but it is this kind of like beige color and as much as I like this and we all agree that I had to swatch again I'm knitting 
a classic rip hat at the moment with yarn that I got from a festival in this Corydale and something else I can't remember and I am loving it so I thought this too I guess again more than enough for the color work will be also a nice pairing for that sweater so what do you think gray as a contrast or beige I just feel like I have a really light skin so I'm not really a beige person and I am I'm considering this option and I want to give a second chance again to circular yokes which are usually not my default go-to the third sweater I'm actually really excited about I'm kind of playing with colors in this one and no I'm not making a lento it feels like every autumn or winter I make a lento but not this year I was about to but not this year I got inspired by a couple of pictures that I found on my Pinterest one of them is the way in which the designer behind other loops played with colors and with different mohairs and different finger weight yarns in her I think it's called other directions or direction sweat or directional sweater I'll put a picture over here so I've decided to make knit California's California sweater I'm very excited about this one because I really want to test my skills when it comes to do a fade or even not a fade like an aquarel type of version and I really want to do something similar to what other loops made in her sweater but in a size inclusive sweater this is as i said a drop sleeve sweater that is knitted if i'm not running decay slice of sport is knitted with one strand of fingering weight and one strand of mohair or suri the pattern is not released yet but i do have some yarn in stash i've got this yarn from lana's alpaca that is called puja i think it's discontinued already and it's like 100 percent alpaca and it's light fingering and it's like the most beautiful rainbow color I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it and i've got leftover moir from my semper this is knitting for olive i think it's colors rose clays then i've got drop skid silk in this light gray see where we're going but obviously we have it's me you know so something different has to enter the building this from a leftover lento is raya so completely different vibe then i've got some midnight soul in this lovely green from a sleepover that i made to my mom and then i've got a couple of blues here and this is the one that i use for my champagne cardigan which is more like a tealy blue it's called midnight here we are and this one it's a full skein of phil colana tealia in this navy color its color is 145 if that gives you something i've got still some this is like old stash this is like a beige that I've used for the first sweater that I made for my mum. I also have Isagare Highland Wool, it's also fingering, it's 275 meters. I just need to look in my stash for like more fingering weight yarn because so far I think I've got more more than main one. I think I'll be fine to be honest. So you can see where my trend is going with this. There's also some light pink in some blue that might go into this maybe some green not sure i just want something a little bit striking despite of all of the pastels it's like a pop of like boom unexpected so yeah i think i'll need to buy probably i'll get some drops flora because i'm doing this with alpaca but I'm, I'm really excited to make just to explore my color options this is going to be my california sweater i can't wait to play with this so the last sweater is not for me, it's for a friend. So if you're the friend, Denise, and you're watching this, please stop watching my video. So myself, Marta from Quarantine Knitter and Denise, they're my Spanish friends. We have decided to make like a sweater swap in the style of what Emily from KO Technique did with one of her best friends. I saw that video and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could swap a sweater eventually? And they said, hey, why not do it this year instead of like knitting a Christmas gift for each other and just putting that pressure with that deadline we just decided to like knit it slowly and give it to each other probably by the start of next year and yeah jump ahead into it so we've sent each other inspiration and from the ones that Denise sent me she had the porcelain sweater she had the alpine bloom I decided to make this one I've never made anything from Lenny Home Simso 
I'm really sorry if I mispronounced it. I've not researched how to pronounce the name of the designer, but I am making the memory sweater solo. This is an oversized colorwork sweater that looks very simple. I don't have yarn for it. It has like just really cute four or five motifs on the yoke and then the rest is pure stock in it. The gauge of this pattern is 18 stitches in 22 rows and is knitted with both four and five millimeter needles. So again, I'm keeping it with like a good decay weight for most of the sweaters. It's knitted with two strands. However, I can reach that gauge with just one and that's what I intend to make. And I still don't have yarn on the stash. This is knitted with Pure Gind from Sandes Garn. And as much as I'd love to try that yarn, I think it's really expensive for the metrage you have, meaning I will have to buy so many balls that it will be too much. So I either will try something like Drops Lima or the Rerum Natura, but I'm not really sure again price-wise. I even consider Mota from World Dreamers, but it's more like a heavy decay and I'm not that sure it would be really, really warm for her. Now, some of the yarn I've treated recently is this Ulysse uh, the Rebel Natura it still has this price at 7 14 I've got both of them for I think it was like six euros and this is in the color two for it two five one zero zero one and it's this really really nice foresty green and this is going to be my first time trying this so I would like to use this two in her sweater but I don't have any other yarn I just know that I've got this and I know that she mentioned that she likes like wine red colors and that she wears a lot of gray. So I'm really tempted to look for something like a, like a medium type of gray or like a light gray. But we'll see where this takes me. Now it's time to move to accessories. So my first pair of Halloween socks will be the Percy Sock by Mary Helix. This is knitted in fingering weight yarn at a gauge that is 36 stitches and 38 rows. It has a cuff with a couple of details and really simple color work. And the actual start of the sock is Percy the Ghost. So I've decided, and I shared this in my last podcast, I'll be using Castle View Yarns, which is their soft sock. 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. I have 425 meters and this cute little bit that I can use for Percy. This is Cream's Autumn to me. It was a gift from my friend Shay and Nick and I can't wait to cast it on. I'm not really sure how to pick the color for Percy the Ghost. So I thought I've got this line yarn, uh, which is their soak yarn the one that has like a bobbin i can feel it here a bobbin with nylon thread in it so i thought this could be like nice contrast for a ghost plus it's white but also recently brenda a friend from my edinburgh knit night gifted me some leftover mulberry silk in this like nice gold yellow when she was visiting the city where i live and i'm not really sure if i should do this or keep that one for a scarf or something else or do that or use that so please by all means give me your opinion say something in the comments which one will be the perfect color of these three for the ghost this is my first accessory custom the next one is going to be a little bit of a different one I learned to crochet. By learn to crochet, I mean that I've learned three stitches and now I call myself a person that crochets and that's who I am. And my friend Shay and me have decided to make like a crochet alone. Basically, I've been telling her that I want to reuse some yarn that I frogged for my throw over sweater. And I found this pattern and I was like, I totally could, could crochet this and it's gonna be fast. I don't want to make a selfie shawl, so I'm making like the crochet version of it. The pattern is called the Weekend Waffle Shawl by Brianna Mason. This is a shawl that you can make in three different sizes. I'll probably end up making the medium and uses worsted weight yarn at a decay gauge. The gauge is 16 stitches and 16 rows and it's knitted, or oh, it's knitted, <laughs> the, the habit of it, is crochet in 
a hook of 5.5 millimeters. The yarn that I'm using is in this shape mostly because as I said before I frogged it from my throwable sweater. I was just not happy with the fit on the neck and I decided if I'm not wearing it I'm frogging it and let me tell you frogging it's a lot of work. This is BZ Garns Northern Lights in the color Anthracite. Anthracite? Anthracite. It's a really, really, really nice yarn. Yeah, and it has like a high content of silk mixed with wool, which makes it like really nice. I remember that this splits a tiny little bit, but still it was a pleasure to wear. I think it will make a really, really nice crochet shawl. We shall see. I can't find this color anywhere else so i'm hoping that i've got i think i do have like the 700 and something meters that the size medium recommends and if not it'll be a fun ride as usual but i'm really really excited to make my first crochet garment i guess i've got two projects left and then that's me i think i'm being really ambitious line nine projects means three per month that's quite a lot but hey again all vibes no plot if i don't finish it i don't finish it i've got a problem too many Andrea Marie patterns, too little time to knit them. So I've decided that I'm going to start tackling my pattern library. And more of that to come probably in the new year because I've got an idea that you, some of you may want to join too. But yeah, I've decided to knit the street I had because I am craving so much half fisherman's rib. I know it grows slow, I know it's a pain for many people, but I do really enjoy half fisherman's rib. I, I just know that I like the rhythm of it and I like the texture of it. So I've decided why not start with this one. Pattern by Andrea Mavi that is knitted in half fisherman's rib. So it's knitted in 2.75 millimeter needles and the gauge is 24 stitches and 56 rows. It's knitted in the round and I think it's bottom up and in fingering weight. And Rebecca from the Crea Bear also sent me some of this skin rose for ply yarn which i've not knitted with i know lived 10 years in scotland never tried this yarn right but she sent me this at the same time that um, my friend who was visiting was giving me these other bits like this bag from raya and i was like this will be perfect because guess what last year when i was at the scottish yarn festival i bought from we count yarns all of these minis because I knew that I was going to make at some point the street I had. So I got all of these minis in all of these super cute colors that I think are quite similar to the original one. So this plus this is an Estria. Australia or Estria? I call it Estria. It's a Estria hat. And it's all a Scottish hat. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I'm not really sure if it will last until November before I cast it on. Because I was going to cast it on in November, but I really like Andrea Maori patterns because they're really entertained and she knows how to keep you motivated throughout the whole thing. So I can't wait to cast this one on. Last but not least, I wanted to include an embroidery project here because it looked like some of you really enjoyed my embroidery original first project, which by the way, I'm about to finish and I've not finished, but yeah. I've been missing my embroidery classes because it's summer, okay? But comes autumn, I want to go back to my Tuesday evenings and actually I probably will go back next week because, as I said before, I do this for like community building but also to learn something new. And one of the things that I want to make are personalized tote bags. So I bought this tote bag from Uniqlo for like 2 99 euros. And it's quite a decent tote bag. I mean, I can then wear it for my knitting projects and I can just wear when I go shopping just a, you know normal cheap size medium Uniqlo tote bag and in the center of it I want to embroider something so I follow this bookish account uh, Lituya I'll put her on the screen here if I can manage and she's a Portuguese based content creator that basically shares all content about books, book recommendation, plots, memes, stuff like that. And she has some merchandising as well. So I think she collaborated a while ago with a brand that I can't recall and used to sell these tote bags that said a reliable narrator. And I absolutely loved it. So I want to 
excuse me, how rude of my phone to just completely cut me off right there when I was sharing my last project. I think I was telling you about my embroidery plans. So I want to mimic this tote bag that this person Lee Tuya sells that says unreliable narrator. And I want to embroider right in the middle of this tote bag. It's gonna take me a while. So it's gonna be probably two or three months, but it's a project that I'm gonna take with me to classes and I can't wait to have it. I think we'll make a really, really nice tote bag for when I'm running errands, when I'm buying books, or even if I just don't have any other project bag, this is gonna be a temporary project bag or a yarn shopping bag. That would be more good, right? And this makes everything. That's all of my knitting and making plans for this fall autumn. Please let me know, are you casting any of this? What are you most excited to cast? Are you joining the Fall Fields Knit Alone? All of the information about that cal can be found on my Instagram, which I'll link below. What are you casting on? What are you most excited about autumn? I always like to know people's projects. Most of the times I change my projects based on their projects. So please comment below. And if you like this video, give it a wee like. You can also subscribe if you wish to see more of this. And until I see you the next time, I wish you loads of knitting, happiness, and just a glorious week. Bye-bye.